All right, so we're looking at a different chemical reaction type today, and this one here is called thermal decomposition. We are decomposing a substance, uh, which implies that the starting reactant is a relatively large material, so it's made of many different atoms, or, or even could be the same type of atom, just built uh, multiple of them connected together with chemical bonds. And we are going to decompose it, which means to disassemble it into simpler or even smaller parts, and uh, thermal meaning temperature, so it requires a bit of heat for this to occur. Some things will actually decompose uh, just at ordinary temperature. Uh, for example, hydrogen peroxide, so some of the stuff that you might keep in the, um, uh, the first aid kit at home. Uh, you might use it to sort of disinfect uh, uh, open wounds, for example. That one there decomposes naturally under sunlight or even just ordinary temperatures, and so you need to have a fresh amount of that every so often. So some things decompose normally. This one here, we've got a starting substance called copper carbonate. That gives it this beautiful green color. Uh, it also seems to be mixed with a little bit of a, perhaps a hydrated part of its compound here. So we've got also mixed with a little bit of copper hydroxide. Let's just call it copper carbonate for now. And I've already added some to the test tube here and we're going to heat it up and we should start to see a chemical reaction occurring. So rather than just sitting there just going, oh wow, pretty colors, I want you to keep your eyes open for the main types of indications of a chemical change occurring. So we've got, do we see a color change? Do we see a gas being formed? Do we see a temperature change? Well, obviously I'm not gonna be testing it with my fingertips to see if it's changing temperature. Um, is it uh, producing light? Is it producing heat? Is it uh, those sorts of chemical indications gives you clues. And I think you'll see some very obvious ones here in this experiment here. So you might be asking yourself, what's this whole setup down here? Well, this thing here should decompose. We start off with some copper atoms, some carbon atoms, and some oxygen atoms. Now, if it disassembles into smaller things, well, what things could you build out of that? So we are probably gonna make carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide or something like that. Uh, as a byproduct, so we can test to see if we are producing carbon dioxide gas. One method would be to simply just uh, put a, a live uh, match, okay, so I could light a, a flame on this side and as we produce gas it'll extinguish that flame. However, there are some other gases out there that can do the same thing, so what could be a, another test to give us some confirmation that we are producing carbon dioxide? Well, carbon dioxide reacts with lime water, also known as calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide and carbon dioxide gas will react to form calcium carbonate um, down over here, which is a white powder. So if we produce that carbon dioxide gas, it'll follow through this pipe into this little test tube here, which I filled with the lime water. And we should start to see a bit of a milky solution occurring there. Now we can't see this too well because um, we're looking for a white substance against a white background. So I'm just gonna put a piece of cardboard back here. Hopefully that gives you a bit of contrast on camera to see if we are noticing any uh, changes down there. All right, let's start this one up. I might move the camera a bit closer so you can see a better look at everything happening. So let's take a closer look at what we've got here. Um, in our test tube, we can see that our green copper carbonate has now become black. So it's actually decomposed from copper carbonate into copper oxide. That means we've uh, ejected some of the carbon and some of the oxygen. And that's formed um, carbon dioxide gas, which we saw kicking up this powder up and up, up over the test tube itself. We're also seeing a little bit of moisture. Can you see some bit of moisture here? And also some of our product has also stuck to that moisture. So where did that come from? Well, if we return our attention back to the label, 
I did mention earlier that we have a little bit of a mixture between copper carbonate, Ca, sorry, CuCO3, and copper hydroxide, which I think is the hydrated um, uh, amount of impurity in this, in this powder. So if there was a bit of moisture in here, then we would expect that some of that moisture would be um, sort of released as we uh, heated it up. So I think that's why we're getting some of that moisture up there, and that's why some of our powder, our product, is being sticking to it. Now, if we follow up the tube and then down the other side into our test tube containing um, the lime water or calcium hydroxide, um, earlier we saw that it went a bit cloudy, a bit a white, white color, and that's where the carbon dioxide mixing with the calcium hydroxide to make calcium carbonate, which is uh, basically chalk or limestone or marble stone, which is a white color. And now it's gone clear. So what's going on? Well. Carbon dioxide, if it continues to uh, bubble through this um, mostly water solution, um, it's actually going to form car uh, carbonic acid. And that's actually going to make this more acidic over time. So you actually dissolve the calcium carbonate product here when it's too acidic. And so that's why it's gone a little bit cl um, clearer than we had before. So huh, we've got a few observations that we uh, have from this uh, experiment. Hope you enjoyed it. We're going to have a look at some other experiments down the road as well.